uh, welcome to another edition of Sipping with the Captain, um, where we pretty much, you know, self-explanatory, we sip. Today, we have the distinguished pleasure of Leah here, who's a mixologist, bartender, um, I'll just call you expert, oh, expert okay. bartender. <laughs> yeah, 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 I already got that feeling. Um, she's here today, she'll be mixing up a few cocktails for us. Um, she's actually from out of Ohio, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, Cleveland? Yes, correct. Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. So, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm honored that she's even here um, taking the time out, you know, spending, you know, maybe about 20 or 30 minutes with me to uh, pretty much let you guys know what she's into and, you know, how she makes her drinks. Well, I appreciate you having me here today. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. I, you know, it's, I really it's my thought, pleasure. Uh, I really thought that, you know, I wasn't sure if we're going to be able to make this happen. So I'm thrilled that I was, you know, we were able to find some time. And we made it, we, yeah. we made it happen. Absolutely. We made it happen. We made it happen. <laughs> um, so what is it that you actually, like, how did you get into uh, the bartender industry? Bar mate? What's the difference between a bar mate and a bartender? Uh, it really, it comes down to just really technicalities. Like, I think, like, it's, bar mate is more of an old term. Um, bartender mixologist is usually what we're referred to anymore. Um, I've all, I mean, I don't think I've ever been referred to as a barmaid, just more a bartender. Okay. But, uh, I got into the industry pretty young. I actually, my mom was a bartender, so I grew up in the bars. I used to get yelled at for drinking all the little V8 cans and like no one can make any Bloody Marys. So and, and what age was this? I was like six. <laughs> like, wow. She would take me to work with her and I would just like sit in this, like sit around a table and draw. And then like all of a sudden they're like, where's all the V8s? <laughs> I actually started drinking at the age of eight. So I don't feel too bad anymore. Oh, well, <laughs> you no, no, not like drinking. I mean, drinking. not drinking, but like, like sneaking and, you know. I, I knew I went only. around a little bit, you know. Yeah. She's like, go get the pineapple juice. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, let me get so the I, I grew up in the bar, but I didn't get into the industry. Um, I would say my first actual restaurant job was when I was 18. And I started hosting and then just moved my way from hosting to bar backing to helping behind the bar. And then I applied for a job telling them I had two years bartending experience, which I did not. And they believed me. <laughs> so... I've been and a bartender ever since. Yeah, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly, you gotta make money. <laughs> hey, look, look, look at you now. Look, look at you now. Um, so you you've been in Philly for how long since? I've been here since Thursday, so this is day four. Okay. And what type of things have you done? What what, what actually brings you to Philly? So I do work for a nonprofit. Um, that takes me all over the country. We do an annual benefit show, usually on the 11th of November. It got pushed back this year. Um, and we just go to whatever city donates the venue to us. This year, it was the Fillmore. Um, so I drove the seven hours to come help out with the benefit. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's called Dear Jack. It's for adolescents and young adults who have cancer. We raise money for them to pay for their treatments, um, their travel, their... Uh, last wishes if it's terminal, rehabilitation, because people don't think about the mental damage that happens when you come to terms with death and then you don't die. Mm -hmm. um, so we just had our benefit last night. Uh, last I checked, we raised $260,000 this year. Oh. So, yeah, we killed it. We absolutely killed it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm real proud of the team. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're proud of you, too. Um so what else have you done since you, you've been here? Have you been to any of our local bars? I have. Uh, the first thing I did, my Airbnb, I still had two hours and I like parking's a nightmare over there. So Was you downtown? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a little bit downtown. I went to Drinker's Pub. That was the first one I went to because they opened at 12. That seemed like a very homey bar. Okay. Uh, very much reminded me of my bar. They had an entire wall of left credit cards <laughs> like they were using. They like punched out the numbers. But they used it as like an entire wall of decor of forgotten credit cards, which I thought was kind of neat. That's different. And then uh, I checked out Sidecar. Sidecar was a good one. Um, that was over like 21st and Christian. Okay, and then, South Philly, okay. And then uh, there was a German one we went to last night, like Frankport. Uh, it was like an indoor, outdoor, a bunch of fire pits, like real good German food there. So. I was there last night. I accidentally ordered a what I thought was the beer everyone else got. It looked like a large, about this cup, but it was actually about this big. So. <laughs> and, and what was that? 
Uh, it was some some German lager. I have no idea. I just told him, I was like, give me a lager. We just got done working the benefit. I'm so tired. I need a beer. <laughs> need to knock the edge off a little bit. Oh, yeah. I definitely needed that. It, so, it, it, <laughs> well there's, deserved. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, while you're here, um, I would highly suggest that you get yourself a cheesesteak. I got to do that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, and might I give you a suggestion or two? Not Geno's or Pat's. <laughs> Not Geno's or Pat's. Keep Please, hearing that. no Geno's or Pat's. I keep hearing Pat's. that. <laughs> um, I like D'Alessandro's. Um, okay. It's actually over there at, uh, what is that? Wendover. Uh, so, goodness. Uh, what is that? Henry and Wendover, I believe. Okay. It's about five minutes from here. All right. Um, D'Alessandro's has been my favorite cheesesteak for the longest of times. Um, other than that, uh, as far as cheesesteaks, I'm trying to think, I just had one that actually won an award this year. Uh, what's that guy's name? Pork. Oh God. John, John's Rose Pork. Now that's down South Philly. That's actually not too far from where you was at with 21st and Christian. Actually, it's like kind of right down the street. Um, but then I open on Sundays and you're leaving. What time are you leaving tomorrow? Mm, I got to be out. Oh, it's a seven hour drive. So I want to be on the road around like 11. So. Be cool. All right. So best bet. Uh, Delisandro's. Okay. For sure. Fair. For sure. Um, I'll give you the number before you leave. Uh, so what drinks do we have on tap for the captain today? All right. So I wanted to share with you a hometown favorite of my bar. Um, I would say anyone that comes in, it's just like, I want to shop. I don't want to know what I want. I give them this. Um, it's what I drink. It's what most of my regulars drink. Uh, if you looked at the family section down to halfway down the bar, pretty much all of them have it in front of them. Uh, we call it a schwa. It was named after one of our bartenders, Joshua, cause that's literally all he drinks. Doesn't drink beer, doesn't drink mixed drinks, seltzers, nothing like literally just does this shot. So that's, um, it. that's it. That is it. It's very simple, very straightforward. It is simply just a raspberry or berry vodka with ginger ale. And it's just a very easy drink. Uh, you would think the carbonation would throw you off, but it really doesn't. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's pour some of those up, right? All right let's, let's make it happen. All right. So, got some shot glasses going on here. And uh, I'm using the Ciroc Red Berry. So always figure, a great choice. Yeah, always. Always, a great choice. always, always. So, I'm actually going to give this a little bit of a chill first. That way, it's not as warm and hard to drink. I prefer mine a little cold, you know? So, so you would say always chill the shaker first when mixing drinks? I, uh, it depends on people. Like, mostly, if you're going to do mixed shots, I usually chill mine. Um, I okay. don't, obviously, I'm not going to chill the uh, ginger ale because, fun fact, if you shake carbonation, going this shaker is going to explode. I learned, so, I learned <laughs> that the hard way. Yeah, you know, I watched someone try and shake a mimosa once, and um, I was like, did you not think about champagne? Like... <laughs> <laughs> So we'll I, I, I did that quite a few times over here because I have no, I, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing as far as like, I mean, I do actually have an idea, but I didn't know like, you know, as far as putting soda or anything carbonated in a shaker, yeah. it explodes. So I learned that the bubble, hard way. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought I was you being know what? cool I sitting think, over here making drinks. I think everyone and it has just, learned I, I that the hard way. Why does it keep exploding? And I was like, oh, it's because it's carbonated. It's carbonated like soda in there. So, and then we're just going to top it off. Some ginger ale. Honestly, uh, ginger ale is a great mixer to just put into like any liquor. If you are looking for something simple, you don't have enough stuff to mix at home. Um, any specific ginger ale? Uh, personally, I um, I usually use uh, Can Canadian Dry. Canada Dry. Canada Dry. Yeah, that's usually where I go to. I keep like because I just go through so much of it. Um, I just get the little cans and just keep like a back stock of them because I find them on sale all the time. Okay. So. Um, I just like, other than doing shots, I don't do uh, pop. Like, I don't do any sort of pop, like just drinking it on its own. I'm just strictly the person that's going to do it with shots. So. <laughs> oh, you don't just drink it? Okay. Mm -mm. Pop. It's soda. all for mixers. Soda. Not soda pop, uh, yeah. pop. Well, you know, the difference of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, this is called a schwa. Okay. Um, one for you as well, if you would like. So, um, I don't know about you guys, but working in a bar is very important that when you do a cheers that you tap it back down onto the bar. Um, it is saying thank you to the bar. It is for good luck to the bar. Um, and if you don't do it, you don't respect the owner. So very important. I just learned a lot. Yeah. See, that's what I was doing. You have a bartender. I, you know, I was just doing it. Just do it. But I, now I really know why. I'm now you know right. why. Now, now you know, know why. why. So cheers. Cheers. 
I almost didn't do it again. Wow. I know, right? And it's so simple. It's easy. <laughs> I could do that myself. I know, right? <laughs> Anyone Damn. can make that drink. <laughs> it's Bartending doesn't have to be complicated. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, you can Just, make it complicated, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like my big thing is that like, I like serving people things that like are different and, but also something that like, this is something simple you can make at home, you know, whether it comes to like making mules, margaritas, mm -hmm. like one of the biggest hits that I have at my bar is a blackberry jalapeno margarita and it's super easy to make. Mm. Just if you pour out about two shots worth of tequila like pour out i mean drink it uh -huh. um and then cut up two jalapenos and just stick them in the bottle cap it for three days and then strain it and you have jalapeno infused tequila does the jalapeno really stand out in that it will it will bite you <laughs> it will get you it is very spicy and i it's love spicy good. margaritas see yeah that's how you do it and so then you just get jalapeno yourself now. Okay. yeah then you just All get right. yourself a little bit of like blackberry syrup or mix or anything you want throw that in there and then your margarita mix where I do my sour and a little bit, I, I top my margaritas with a little bit of Sprite, just a little splash. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it helps even out the sourness of it. So highly recommend give, uh, infusing. It's uh, Infusions are the easiest way to like impress anyone when it comes to making drinks. I'm learning a lot. So <laughs> when you leave, I'm, I like to impress people. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm learning a lot. <laughs> He's taking notes over here. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm new at uh, you know sitting up here trying to like mix drinks. And, yeah, you know, I sit up here and YouTube stuff and come up with some my own little creations. Sure. My my problem is, I, I like to really taste the alcohol. Oh yeah, and so like me me doing that, it's it's more likely I don't like a lot of color in my drink. Mm -hmm. Like with like no juice attached to it. Oh yeah, like, no, I definitely I believe me. Don't get me wrong. I like to just rip my shots of tequila myself. And, <laughs> as, as I get older, though, I'm starting to have more of an appreciation for, like, you know, the, the sweeter uh, cocktails, um, the ones that don't have so much alcohol, or if they do, it's hidden. <laughs> See, and you know what the problem with that is? Is that, like, you're like, you're trying to be like, oh, they're easier to drink, you know, it's, like, not, not going to hit me as hard. But the hangover, the sugar hangover <sighs> is what gets you, because that's what it is. It's the sugar so, like, when you start adding things like pineapple juice and grenadine and, like, all these different sugars, like, that's when the hangover is going to get you. So, as they go down easier, they go down faster, which causes a worse hangover, so. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't sit up here and uh, be able to tell you when the last time I actually had a hangover is that I woke up with a headache. Uh, it's been a while. I was kind of like, I'd be more so loopy, yeah. like, like out yeah. of it. Like I don't be having, you know, because I kind of stopped drinking like the, the cheap liquors. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's important e &J, too. E&J, for instance. That's I, important too. Yeah, I, yeah you got to have a good grade of alcohol in the Absolutely. system. Absolutely. You know, to keep the party going. Mm -hmm. You know, for you to feel it, for you to wake up without a headbanger the next morning. That's some good food and a lot of water. That's, you know. A lot of water. <laughs> now, I learned that from my sister who lives around the corner. She, she drinks and she'll drink water behind it. Mm -hmm. Like pretty much to yep. sit up here and have, keep the party going, and for her to, uh, you know, sustain a long night of drinking. Pretty oh, it much, helps. <laughs> it helps. It definitely helps. Sustain a long <laughs> night of drinking. Um, so what I'll say about the uh, the drink that we just had, um, it's highly recommendable. Um, I would give it, I would give it an eight and a half. It's simple, straight to the point. Um, I would like to have it in a. Much bigger glass. <laughs> I'll take I'm an eight and a half. At, at, after, after me shooting the shot and whatever, I'm sitting there, I want, want another one of those. I, I know, another. that's I'll, the problem. Yeah, I yeah. would like another one of them. And then you close out your tabs for 40 bucks, you know? <laughs> How many of those shots would you say, I mean, it would take for you to actually get nice on, you know, to get to a place where you like to be a happy place? So um, <laughs> even though it tastes like there's nothing in there, the shot does have a standard one and a half ounce pour of liquor in it. Okay. So that is just on top of that is the mixer. Hence why like I like to use the bigger glasses because it gives you the room for the mixer. Um, so, I mean, like it just really depends on how much I've had to eat that day and how fast they're going down. But uh, they do like to sneak up on you um, mm -hmm. just because they are easy and you don't realize like, you know, that there's that much liquor in it. But it's just a standard of like the same thing as taking a shot of tequila just with a little extra in it. So... I mean, like, I like to partake in 
a couple of them. So I would say like, I would start getting like a real good feel going like. A real good feel. Huh? Yeah, probably around like five, six of them. But like that's, I'm also like a seasoned drinker. So. <laughs> You've been doing this for a while. I might have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a veteran, a veteran. There you go. Um, what have you noticed uh, in your short time from being here, the, the, the biggest difference, or if there's any difference between an Ohio bar and a Philly bar? Uh, let me think. Well, I will say that um, there's a thing called a bartender's handshake. Um, Never knew about this either. So Keep I going. know but this is such an educational, <laughs> such an educational video. So a bartender handshake is when another bartender goes into a bar, um, and it's pretty pretty traditional that you know bartenders take care of each other, um, but usually it's a shot of fernet. Um, I don't even know if I know what the fernet. So fernet it's, it's is good. it's an herbal liqueur. Um, it mm. is very, very pungent. My dad likes to describe it as brushing your teeth and then drinking an ashtray. So, <laughs> um, people ask okay. us bartenders why we drink it. And I just tell people it's because we no longer have a soul and we've sold it to the devil. That is the bar. <laughs> so, and we no longer like ourselves. So <laughs> is that, is that bad? It's, you know, it depends on the day. It depends on the day. It is, I mean, like, you're giving up your weekends. You're giving up your nights. Goodbye to, like, any doing anything in the daytime. You are now a night walker. Uh, and it's That's just, true. yeah, it's That's like, true. it's kind of selling your soul to double for money. So, but a bartender handshake is usually the bartender will, if they can, they'll do a shot of Pernet with the bartenders. Um, or just, they'll put a glass just in front of it. And that's just, like, a kind of like a signal and, like, you know, bartenders take care of each other so it's not unusual for uh them so how to would they drink. know you like a bartender when you actually i mean like just uh, you... bartenders like you know we like to converse with our guests you know okay. so like when one starts to really start to talk back and like you're just starting... like actually get along and whatnot like then people start to realize like oh you you're clearly in the industry like where do you work at so it comes up pretty just quickly. from the conversation yeah you can just tell from the way people carry themselves like i can probably within five ten minutes of someone sitting at my bar Tell them it's like, oh, you you work somewhere in the industry. You're at least in the service industry. Now, did they give you any four net hair in Philly while you were here? Uh, I did. Yeah. I did actually. I had a shot of net yesterday. So and they picked up on you being a bartender mm-hmm. from the conversation. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great I uh, actually good job, Philly. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Good job. The first one, she was like, she was all like freaked out at me at first. But I think what cued her off was that I was stepping outside and I was like, hey, do you want my card to hang on to? Because I'm going to take my bag with me. And she was like, why are you being so weird? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, you're being really strangely nice. And I was like, okay, I was just making sure you knew I wasn't going to like walk on my tab. And she's like, oh, you're in the industry. And by the end of the night, she's like, we're adopting her. She's not leaving Philly. (laughs) And then probably might have a few drinks on them. Yeah. You know, it's a, I I tend to, you know, when I partake in drinks and go places, I tend to be like, get you a drink, get you a drink, make sure the manager gets a drink. Like if you can't have it now for after shift, so I tend to get very generous. <laughs> hey, I think a lot of us get pretty generous when we uh, consume. You get a couple in you. <laughs> enough alcohol, you know. It's it's the, it's the feel good, you know, the feel good story you got going on there. Yeah. Um, what other drinks do we have on tap for today? All right, so I cat. want to make a um, actual drink, not just a shot for you this time. You're talking over here about how you want something to sip on, so I'm gonna make you a mule. Love mules. Good. Um, so we are going to make a pear and blood orange mule. Never had that before. Most people haven't. So, <laughs> <laughs> Never had um, so I already got some glasses with a little bit of ice in here. We're going to get those going. So I'm going to be using, I've actually never used this brand before. So I was really excited. Okay. So that's an organic vodka. Okay. Wild Roots. Perfect. So you Wild can Roots find that pear. CWSpirits.com. Haven't oh. tried this yet. I'm very excited to try it. So hopefully it's going to work out well with this drink. And use code UMP5. <laughs> All right. So again, we don't waste here. So we're just going to go ahead and do some pouring. So um, one thing I like to do with my traditional meals, not my flavored ones, that kind of sets it apart. Um, one question real quick. Since you've never had that, you wouldn't want to like sip on it, see what it... I can take a sip of it. Yeah, I would yeah. like that. I'm, I'm curious to know what you think. All right. All right. So, uh, I get a little shot glass behind you there. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious. To I'm know, also I... curious. It's, it's 70 proof. It does. You know what? It 
But it literally just that, smells like straight what, pear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it, it tastes and smells like what's in it. Because it's organic. I broccoli. like that. Like, yeah. I was curious to know, you, know your thoughts on, you know, what it tastes like, the smell. Oh, my God. It's like if they made, like, a pear juice instead of apple juice. That would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not, um, it's not syrupy at all. No. Like, you do no. get, you do taste the alcohol in there, but it is super smooth and nice and sweet like an apple juice. It's, it's the right amount of alcohol. Like, like if Mott's made pear juice, uh, like, this is what it would be. The adult version? Yeah. <laughs> the I adult you version. The adult version. Yeah, that's going to work great. Uh, so, um, just was curious. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to use that. I'm actually going to put a little bit of lime juice in here. Um, I prefer to throw some lime juice just in them. Helps give it a little bit more just because ginger beer is bitey. Ooh, yes it um, is. So it helps even out that bitiness of giving it that little bit of citrus in there. So we got some ginger beer going. And we're not going to fill this all the way up with ginger beer just because we're going to put a little more in there. And ever since I've been drinking ginger beer, like I've never had it by itself. I always had it in the Moscow Mule. I never... like it. I like it by itself. <laughs> yeah, I've never. No, not not to not to say that you know I wouldn't like it. I've just never had ginger beer without having the Moscow. Yeah, Mule. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so next thing I'm going to use is the blood orange San Pellegrino, um, just to help give it a little more of a berry taste to it instead of uh -huh. just the pear. So we'll get that going in here. Pay attention, folks. You can learn something. So if you like Moscow mules, I'll make a suggestion. So normally it's just, you know, your vodka, your lime juice, your ginger beer. Put two dashes of bitters in it, like traditional bitters. It is game changing, hmm. game changing. I do it with all of mine and every time people are like, what kind of ginger beer are you using in here? This is so good. Bitters. I swear just by it. Just simple bitters. Yep. That's it. Like. <laughs> All right, so you, we got... you said it doesn't take too much to uh, sit up here and make drinks. No, I listen. I like to work smarter, not harder. So that's why I say the infusions. You know, simple. Go simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. You know. Now, now, since you're here um, as as a guest on uh, Sip with the Captain, do we have to plank our cocktails? I usually do. I mean table and then sip it. It's like, more of a shot thing, but is I mean, it's like, a shot thing. It's not a cocktail. If I'm drinking okay. with people, like I'm like you know. I definitely want to say cheers, and I appreciate cheers. you having me on here. So, thank you. Mm. Whoa. Good. <laughs> <laughs> See him already really like, cute. <laughs> a ten, a fucking ten. <laughs> yeah, flavored mules. When I do my menu at my job, I always put new mules on there. I try and switch them up, make them different. Um, just uh, even... and, and they add that actual drink to the actual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make our drink menu at my bar, so like I, the mules seem to be the popular one. Is uh, I did I did a pear mule. I did a sour mule actually. Um, that was a huge hit. <laughs> and what's the most popular one? Did the sour? Um, as far as the mules, yeah, I would say the sour mule is probably my most popular one I've done. Mm. Well, I, uh, I'll say this. You made a simple, uh, shot with raspberry in it. Um, and you've made a, uh, a Moscow mule with a little twist to it with the pear wild roots. This is nasty. I, I would appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Listen, or I like, get, you gotta, you know, tweak it some kind of way. I get the honesty at my bar. That's, I mean, like, that's what makes you a better person yeah, and yeah, better yeah, what you yeah, do, yeah. you know? You don't so. want nobody to be fake, which you want, you want them to be real and authentic. You yeah, know? exactly. If, if you tweak something, listen, you, you know, let them know. Let them let know. Um, well, it's, it's been a pleasure having you. I appreciate it. Um, we hope that you come back to Philly. I plan on it. I'm having a blast in the city. <laughs> Th this is Leah. I'm the captain. We're going to sit up here and continue to drink a little more. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, we'll do this again, definitely. We out. Until next time.